Hey everyone, Ryan here, we're MNR Productions, and welcome to Ask MNR episode 168, the series where I answer your questions and talk about a lot of other things, Lego in general. If you have a question you want answered on next week's episode, leave it down in the comment section below and there's a chance I'll pick it. Anyway, our first question comes from TFFSage401, and he says, do you prefer stud showing or studless? And I think this is very much going to be a case-by-case -case basis, depending on what the build is of. I think the most recent example we can look to, and I'll be doing a comparison on these sets, is with the UCS R2-D2 sets. There is a leaked image of the head of UCS R2-D2, and it's much more curved off. It's showing pretty much no studs on top of the R2-D2 head versus the 2012 version, which is pretty much only showing studs on the top of the R2-D2 head. And I find this to be one of the cases where the studs showing seems to look better. And I think it's because it's kind of still a segmented, broken up curvature on the R2-D2 head when you have the newer model. And with the older one, it just, it's still a broken up look, but with the studs, it makes sense. I don't know. It's one of those weird things. Obviously they try to do something new and make it look better. And it's going to come down to personal preference as to which one you like better. But I think I'm leaning towards the studded version. But of course, when I get it in person and can do a comparison, I'll know for sure. But as far as something I prefer no studs on, I think the newer space shuttle is a good example. It looks really cool with the studless clean look to it. So I think there are certainly examples that are good for both. And I don't think it's necessarily a fair thing for me to sit here and be like, I only prefer it this way and there's no way I'll ever change my mind because that's just not true. Perhaps another great example is the sand crawlers. The newer UCS sand crawler with the studs on the outside looks great, but so does the 2005 sand crawler with no studs on the outside, just completely brick built and clean looking. Oscar Knows Nothing says, but like, didn't Jang start with a gray background though? Okay, so... Maybe I should clarify. My joke last week about Jang being the originator of white backgrounds was just that, a joke. It wasn't meant with any malice towards Jang or people that use white backgrounds. It's more just a joke about the idea that some people think that the only person that can use a white background is Jang Bricks. Not Jang himself, just some of the fandom. Point being, he does the white background very well, and so other people think he's the only person that should do a white background. Golden Pigs 12 says, you can put your videos as unlisted and then put them in a playlist so that people can still watch them without them pulling down your channel. I I thought about this, of course, because I do this for my live streams, but I'm not going to do this because the videos aren't worth watching. I think that there is some value still in perhaps people wanting to watch a older live stream that they maybe missed or just want to go back and watch. But as far as a 2013 set review of Jabba's Palace that's just done incredibly poorly... I, I, there's no value in you seeing that to me. It's not a good video. There's a reason the videos only have a few hundred or a few thousand views to begin with, and that's because they're not good. Richie says, what do you think about the Lego City Crooks hideout set getting canceled in Lego's reason for it? So this is the second set in a span of a year that Lego has canceled very close to release. So obviously the first one was the Osprey, and now we have this Crook hideout set that Lego went and canceled. It originally showed up like in the back of a Lego City instruction manual as kind of like one of the upcoming sets that we assumed was going to release in March, and then March came around and it didn't get released. And so apparently like I said, the reason that it was canceled was because it clashed with their brand values. And I think that Lego makes a lot of these things that are most certainly non-issues into issues by themselves. It is completely their fault that they have come out and made this a topic for people to talk about. It wouldn't have been something anybody would have batted an eye towards. It's a really cool bad guy hangout with TNT on top that's going to explode. It's got a falling water barrel. It's got like a police car. It's just, I mean, it basically looks like a converted firehouse or something. I just don't see the negative appeal of it. You got to have something for the bad guys as well as the good guys in your Lego city if you're going to have bad guys. I don't see anything inherently wrong with that. Now, of course, they seem to want to mold the way children play very sharply in certain directions, but that's just them, I suppose. But when something like this happens, it brings me back to how did we get to this point? If this clashes so deeply with your brand values that you had finished the set, put it in marketing material and put it in other Lego sets that was imminent release, and then you're like, oh yeah, but no, we're not going to release this because it clashed with our brand values. How did it get that far? How did it even get past, like, th like there's you know conceptual stage where like hey maybe we could make this and there's like the stage of making models of like oh yeah this is looking pretty good let's keep going and then you go you know keep going up and up the the ladder until you get your finished product how do we get this far up the ladder of production and then be like oh yeah no this is bad like clearly it wasn't that bad until 
I, I like I just I don't get it. Nobody said anything. Nobody cared. Like literally, no one cares. It's a non-issue, and now it's an issue because Lego makes it an issue. Same with the Osprey. It was a non-issue. There are two people that cared about it. Clearly, cancel culture isn't going to come for Lego if they made this set because you have a brand like Kobe, who I think is doing something pretty cool, or Brickmania, um, both making tons of Lego military kits. Like it's, it's not the end of the world, and Lego makes it out like it's going to be the end of the world if they were to release this product, and it's just not. So. I like it. I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was a unique thing. Having T on T on top of a building was a nice touch, and uh, it's just not going to be releasing now, so uh, I don't know. I think it's stupid. Star Wars Bricks says, I saw on the TikTok Timmy told you to make, it had around 25,000 views, and if TikTok with its creator fund is four cents per 1,000 views, that would make you around $1,000. Did you make that much money? And if you did, you owe Timmy one. Look, man, you got to go back to math class. I haven't been in the math class in like four years. And this is just basic. Four cents per thousand views, 25,000 views. That's a dollar. How you arrived at a thousand dollars is beyond me. No, I did not make a thousand dollars on TikTok. And if I did, that'd be great. I would love to make a thousand dollars on TikTok. Who wouldn't? But I'm having fun with TikTok nonetheless. Like I hate that, you know, you probably watched this series over the last year or two and every time TikTok comes up, I'm like, ah, TikTok's stupid. I hate it. It's dumb. You know what? I'm having fun with it now. And uh, I've made some fun ones. I've made so like, like for TikTok for me, it's like, I'll probably be making the videos where it's like, this is my collection. This stuff that looks cool. Cause that's what people tell me do well on TikTok. But it's also like a place where I can be like, oh, this is funny. I'm going to make it because it's funny and that's like half the reason I usually make something when I just like I'll have an idea and I'll just run with it because I think it's funny and I really like that part of TikTok for me where I can see something and be like oh my god that's funny and then just go and make it and it's done like an hour later so yeah I'm enjoying it I am in like the TikTok creator fund now so I'm making money on TikTok but it's nothing like you know, it's, it's a drop in the bucket compared to what I have elsewhere at this current point in time. Leon says, why do you have to say comma after you say, however, I don't have to say anything for one. However, comma, it's great for dramatic effect. Unlikable Kitty says, do you think like will ever make a high Republic Lego set? No, it's a book. There's no, I, I can't think of a book that Lego has made a Lego set off that, that doesn't, it's, you know, maybe there are Lego sets that also happen to appear in books, but it's certainly not based off a book. I do not see a world in which Lego makes a set solely based off a book like that, especially a book with that, like, like there's no way they do it. Look, Lego's scared to make prequel trilogy sets. There's no shot they're gonna make a set based off a book. I'm sorry, man. It's just not gonna happen. All right, really long question. Perhaps one of the longest ones I've ever answered here, but I'll try to keep the short version for you. He says, I'm curious how you might go about presenting a product or concept idea to Lego. And he says that it's kind of something that can apply to every Lego set. So it's clearly not like a Lego set idea. He wants to know how to get in touch with them and whether or not you should copyright the idea before presenting it. So one, should you copyright the idea? Absolutely, yes. If you think it's an idea that's really good and could make millions of dollars, you're gonna wanna make sure you sure up your end of the bargain there. You wanna make sure you have the rights to your idea. And after you get those rights to your idea, I would love to hear it. I mean, I wouldn't go sharing it around with everyone and anyone uh, right now, but once you sure that up, I would love to see what you have because it sounds rather interesting, especially if you're gonna write a comment like this about it. I don't know exactly how you could get in contact with Lego for an idea like this. You could potentially post it on Lego Ideas, but that doesn't seem like where you wanna be with this. Maybe call their customer service and see if you can find out like some special phone number. I would perhaps try to like call up Lego corporate or something. Like I'm not sure what kind of avenues they have. I know you can like search up different like Lego departments and try to like call their phone number. So maybe search up like Lego Media department or something for your country call that phone number like like there are different phone numbers outside of lego customer service that you can find you're just gonna have to do some digging and then maybe post it to lego ideas although like i said i don't think that's the way to go but i also don't know the exact route to go for contacting them paul says are you excited for the looney tune cmf dude i am pumped for the Looney Tunes CMF. I used to love watching Looney Tunes when I was younger. One of my favorite movies when I was younger was Looney Tunes Back in Action. I think it's worth a rewatch here soon um, with the with the CMF coming out. So yeah, I'm, I'm very pumped. It doesn't appear that it's going to be any integration with the uh, movie that's coming out, but it's still an exciting CMF nonetheless. Also, I'm not sure if it's boxes or bags yet. I just, I don't know. Jacob Lee says, I don't know if you've answered this before. I just wanted to know why you have a problem with Ninjago. I personally think it has decent sets, good figures, and enjoyable TV show. My problem with Ninjago Ninjago is not with Ninjago. My problem with Ninjago is the fandom. I think the fandom for Ninjago is just 
ridiculous at some point. There are people that are fans of Ninjago, and obviously it's not going to be representative of Ninjago as a whole or the people that enjoy Ninjago as a whole. I mean, I can think of one reasonable Ninjago fan, the Tanaglia Studios, but like, if I say anything, and I, that's what that's what I enjoy about it, really, is, is riling you folks up, and you folks know who you folks are. If I say X, Y, or Z about Ninjago is bad, they're like, why do you hate Ninjago? I'm upset. Oh my god, this hurts me. Oh, you've offended me. The Ninjago fans are literally like people on Twitter that are just like social justice warriors, but for Ninjago, and it's so freaking funny every time. I don't care about Ninjago. I don't think about it. I just think the fans are absolutely insane sometimes, and it's really funny to mess with them. Lobster Brick says, I started making YouTube videos for fun a few weeks ago, but my videos are bad, like really bad. Any tips on how I can make my videos better? Well, as we saw on last week's episode of Ask m &R, my videos used to be really bad, and here we are 11 years later, and they still aren't like great, great, but they're better. And uh, so yeah, I looked at your channel. I didn't get to watch any of your videos. I just don't have the time, but I will say it looks like, you know, you've made two dozen videos or so, and you've just done the same thing over and over and over again, right? The thumbnails don't look any different. You didn't change up the lighting. You did like, like there's nothing that you are doing to help yourself. You gotta help yourself, man. And this goes to any, you know, I get these questions every week and I don't pick them a lot because it's repetitive at a point, but you know, I have your channel pulled up, like I said, and it's just, you know, you say they're bad, you acknowledge that they're bad, but you're not doing anything to change that. And whether that's the format of the videos or the, like the titling of the videos, looks like it's decent, but obviously it can be better. And certainly the thumbnails are where I would say, just looking at your channel on the whole, uh, they could use a lot of work. And when people ask me, oh, can you help me with my YouTube channel? I really think the best direction to go because like, I'm not gonna be able to cater to everyone that asks me individual needs, especially for free. Like it, it's a service you're asking for. It takes a lot of time out of my day and I just cannot provide that to anyone and everyone who comes and asks. But I will tell you, there are a lot of YouTube videos that are gonna help point you in the right direction, a lot. Like look up YouTube videos on how to do lighting better, how to do thumbnails better, how to do your titles better, how to do your description better. There are tools that are free for everyone to use on YouTube. And so what I've used over the years is, is just, you know, when I have a question, I go look it up for a YouTube video and usually you'll be able to, you know, maybe you'll have to watch for 20 or 30 minutes. You gotta do some research, I know, right? Um, and, and try to figure out what you wanna do better and go down that rabbit hole and learn how to do it better. And it's gonna take time. It's not gonna be necessarily easy. It's not gonna be a snap of the finger and all of a sudden you're better at making thumbnails. Your thumbnails are probably gonna suck for a couple of years until you can perfect either Photoshop or whatever tool you wanna use for that. So yeah, you definitely have a long way to go. It's good that you've started though, because what a lot of people will do is be like, I wanna start my channel, but I don't need, I don't have this, I don't have that, I, you know. You have at least started and I applaud that. I think that's a great thing, man. You, you're on the path, you just have a long way to go. Success is never guaranteed, obviously, and I'm like really fortunate to have gotten successful, I suppose, but I, you know, it's worth working towards and I hope you're able to figure it out. But like I said, look up some YouTube videos, help yourself, try different things, make custom thumbnails, make them pop, get some better lighting, get a better table, certainly a better table and a better background. Now, obviously maybe depending on your situation, you might not be able to do that, but in a perfect world you are and you can and you will. And obviously you aren't making money on YouTube, so maybe you wanna do it in a cheap way. So maybe you can look up on YouTube, you know, cheap ways to set up my YouTube background or something. There are different avenues to find different pieces of information that hopefully can help you. So I wish you luck and I'm glad you've at least started because a lot of people won't even start. Fluffy Banana says, listen, buddy, Ryan, buddy, I just thought of the most brilliant idea that has never been done for Legos before. You'll make millions, ready? The golden idea, Lego ASMR, building a set or simply mixing Legos for hours. All right, uh, Fluffy Banana, I'm gonna have to ask you to exit the premises immediately. And if you ever come back, I'm gonna trespass you and call the police. <laughs> Bro, no, <laughs> I'm not doing Lego ASMR. That's like top level cringe, man. And also I'm sure it's been done. I mean, I, I don't watch ASMR, I don't partake, but it has to have been done. People have to be actively doing it. I'm sure there's channels built on it right now. I just won't be the one to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> Brickscape says, since you don't need to follow the Lego Ambassador Network rules anymore, do you want to change your profile picture back to your sig fig? I am very happy with my profile picture on YouTube. I think it's a great picture. I think I look rather dashing and it's a really cool background that represents what I do. I love the picture. I don't plan on changing it anytime soon. I think the sig fig is an overrated way to show yourself in the Lego space. It's a great way to start. It's a great way to like be part of the community, I suppose, but I feel like it's certainly not necessary. 
and I really like my picture right now and I'm not changing it. Like it's, it's, that's the picture and will be until I find a picture that I think is better. And I don't take a lot of pictures of myself, so it might be a while. But on top of that, you say uh, the land rules. What's funny about the land rules is that they are incredibly selectively enforced. You'll notice that there are plenty of people within the LEGO Ambassador Network that still use a LEGO minifigure as their profile picture even though I've known people to have been told that the reason they didn't get in LAN was because they had a Lego minifigure as their profile picture. So take that for what it's worth, but the hypocrisy is immense. I can't even pronounce your name, but uh, thank you for the question. He says, do you think Lego could give us a secret surprise box in the UCS gunship, which has Jedi Bob and or phase two Cody, like how they did with Diagon Alley? So I think if this was to happen, it wouldn't be phase two Cody. There's no way they would put phase two Cody in a surprise box like that. He's too big a marketing piece at this point for them to do that with. Plus he's probably gonna end up in like a CMF further down the line, even though he should have been in the Grievous Starfighter to begin with. They have run phase two Cody through the mud at this point, completely ruined the best place for the character, now the second best place for the character. And now you're gonna have to find him in a blind bag, basically gambling. All that being said, uh, will they give us a secret surprise box with maybe more likely Jedi Bob? I still think is very unlikely. I think that Lego Star Wars doesn't tend to get these sorts of cool things. For me, it was something that crossed my mind, but I just don't see it happening. Maybe it will, but you know, you look at it and it's like, Lego is really throwing themselves under the bus if this is the case, because Jedi Bob was obviously one of the most requested things and you can see the backlash from it. Read the comments on my UCS gunship video, how many light, you know, tons and tons of people feel the same way about this and Lego is really taking a lot of bad PR for this because they're not listening to their fans. So why would they just keep this big secret, let everyone be angry for six months? And there are a lot of people upset about this and that are angry, including myself, that Lego would go out and ask what figures you want and then not give them to you. So why would they hide this for so many months? I mean, yeah, it'd be a great, wonderful surprise, but I don't think the negative PR and press around it is worth it. So could they? Yes. Will they? In my opinion, no. Marco says, what was the first Lego event you went to? It was Brickford, Virginia, 2011. I got to go on like the Saturday of the event and I was able to stay there for like two or three hours. We were basically on the way back from our vacation up in like New Jersey, Massachusetts, coming back down to Florida. And Brick Fair was happening on that day, and so my parents agreed to let us go there. I think the day before, I actually went to like the Harley Davidson place that was kind of nearby, like in New York or something. I want to say it was an hour or two away because my dad was really into the show at the time, and he likes uh, the motorcycles and everything, so that was cool as well. Um, and then we went to Brick Fair, Virginia uh, for like the, the morning or whatever, and I got to meet my friend uh, Sean, aka Legos fan, for the first time. He was my first like online friend that I met in person, so that was like really, really cool. And I really, I remember the interaction. <laughs> I was like, because I didn't know what he looked like so i knew like what mocks he had brought or, like builds or whatever um so you know i'm going through the sections looking for him and i eventually get around to him and i literally go you legos fan and he goes yup <laughs> so we just hung out for a couple hours so that was really cool i didn't vlog it or anything because it was 2011 it was just kind of before those times for me but it was a very awesome time and a really cool first lego event for me black says what are your opinions about the rumored captain rex helmet it doesn't exist i don't know where you heard this rumor i haven't heard it and if i haven't heard it probably ain't real. So that is going to do it for Ask R today, everyone. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed, hit that like button. And if you have a question you want to answer on next week's episode, comment sections down there. Thanks for watching. Peace out.